What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at this graphics card. Now this was a card that was recently donated to us and if you've been following the channel you would have seen it in a couple of our previous videos. If you didn't make sure you hit that subscribe button now so that you can catch our videos going forward. Now this is the R9290. It's a graphics card that we completely missed the generation of and not only that we forgot about it and in our recent videos we actually looked, took a look at tearing it down and giving it a clean up because it came to us in not a very good state at all. But now that it's running perfectly fine we wanted to see what it could actually do. Released in 2013 by AMD as a high-end graphics card, this would have actually cost you about three to four hundred pounds back in the day. Now obviously prices have completely decreased on that, but this one being the four gig model didn't actually survive the GPU crisis at all. These were actually going for a super price if you could find them at all. But now that things are coming down, you can actually pick them up for a little bit more of a reasonable price. I say reasonable, actually these are roughly going on eBay for about 80 pound. And considering the performance that we managed to get out of it, that probably isn't actually worth it. I would wait for it to actually drop a little bit more. Now the reason we say that is because obviously this card is quite old now and it's actually coming out of service. AMD stopped doing the drivers for it not so long ago, so you're pretty much stuck with what you've got. Now to test this, obviously we needed to put it onto our test bench and to do that we needed some drivers. So we headed over to the AMD website to have a look at what they've got. Now the drivers are obviously under the legacy mode, but we were quite surprised at actually how modern they were. Inside the AMD drivers, you will get the AMD software, which you're all probably used to with the more modern cards. You've got the ability for the streaming and recording. You can turn on your Radeon tooling, like your Radeon chill and things like that. And you can also look at your FPS overlay. So it was pretty impressed that you could actually get that kind of stuff with a card of this age. Now also being the 4 gig model, obviously it can still compete in games today when it comes to memory, but can it actually do it in performance? To find out, we actually pitted it against some of the most hyper demanding games that we've got. And this is what we found.
So for testing, we made sure that we run this to our targeted 1080p 60 frames per second. And as you can see from those results, we didn't quite get there on a lot of the games. Some of the more demanding games like Crisis Remastered and Cyberpunk, it really did show its age and it struggled to even get 30. But the rest of the games actually surprised us quite a lot because it meant that this card has still got a bit of power in there to play some of the AAA games out today. Now obviously we couldn't leave that there because some of those games actually have some helpful little AMD tools such as FSR. We decided to retest it again with Cyberpunk 2077 and go through the different FSR settings we could. Now keeping with our 1080p high settings we decided to try it with FSR quality. In this setting we saw a slight increase in performance but it wasn't enough to actually shout about. So we decided to go completely to the other scale and try a bit of performance. Now under performance mode it actually performed pretty well gaining over 60 frames per second on average. Which was absolutely awesome apart from the quality of the picture the game probably wouldn't be playable because you could barely see anything at all. So instead we decided to try a bit of a balanced view and the balanced view gave us some of the best results. Averaging around 50 to 53 frames per second, it was more than playable and it looked good too. And going through the overall settings across the whole FSR, we managed to see a good picture there, particularly for something that isn't officially supported. So even though this card is quite old, we can see that it can actually perform pretty well in some of our AAA titles today. Obviously we need a little bit of help from software for some of those later things and particularly the really demanding things, but it will actually get there in the end. Would you actually buy one of these now? I probably wouldn't recommend it. Uh, looking on eBay, these are roughly going for about £80 and I don't think they're quite worth that. What I would generally do is add a little bit more to that and go for something like a GTX 1060 purely because the drivers are still supported. You do get official FSR support. They tend to be a little bit quicker, but not that much more money. Now this would actually make quite a cool retro piece and obviously being an AMD card, you could use something on the Linux range because of the AMD drivers being open source. They tend to be supported a lot longer on that. So maybe something like a SteamOS system, this would be perfect in. But as always, I wanna know what you think. Do you have one of these cards in your system now? And what kind of games do you play and what kind of performance do you actually get? Make sure you drop a comment in below and let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this and we'll catch you in the next one.